that was a uh, very interesting talk. So I, I had a couple of actually questions, you know. So uh, you were speaking about this, um, uh, you know, uh, about this uh, um, surface charges, right? So in the in the slide where you were describing the mm -hmm. uh, this uh, Russian team who were uh, able to transport the energy over the thin wire, mm -hmm. so you had some ideas. You showed the diagrams where you explained that it could be due to this uh, different um, type of energy transport than what we know from as pointic vector, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. So th this this comes from your own kind of calculation, or you uh, what what you know what was the motivation for for the surface charge base, as, as you explained. That comes from your calculation. Yeah. It, if you use very high frequency in in such systems, then the the usual drift current becomes practically zero mm. because we also have a skin effect. And the skin effect is actually that if you have very dynamic uh, currents, they, then you have the lens effect mm. in the wire, which cancels that you create a, a secondary current in the wire, which cancels the primary current, actually. Mm -hmm. And this uh, is called the, the skin effect. And mm -hmm. you also ha only have very little um, drift current left very close to the surface. Mm. But if if you also apply very high voltages, so it's not just a couple of, uh, let, let's say, 10, voltage, 10 uh, volts, but you're in the kilovolt range, then also your surface charges become very high. Mm. And if they are very dynamic, then, only then, can you use those surface charges for energy transport. Mm. So you both have to have a high voltage and a high frequency. Mm. And, but the Maxwell theory does not explain that very well, how the uh, power flow can be unidirectional. You know, uh, so you have to have a scalar field mm -hmm. type of magnetic field. Right. But uh, the skin effect is very well known, right? So this is a mm -hmm. kind of the standard, I would say, a phenomenon. Right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I don't quite understand the reasoning that you would say if I just use a high frequency, then obviously the skin effect will be dominant, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, that's not what these uh, Russian people are claiming, right? You, no. you don't. It's not sufficient to have just high frequency, right? No, you must also be high in the voltage, and but um, if you if you have this, this skin effect then you don't have a magnetic field around the wire mm. because there is no current flowing. The, the magnetic field is more or less cancelled. Mm. And for that reason, you don't have any pointing flow left. Mm. So that's why the, the standard electrical engineer in power, power engineering uh, does not believe that a high frequency system can be used for energy transport, mm. only for telecommunication. Mm. And for that you have two wires and uh, that you have a, an electric field that is pointing from wire to wire, uh, a transverse electric field. But with a single wire you can also have these longitudinal mm. fields. And, but that does not explain right away that there is a power flow over this wire. Mm. And for that you need this, this extra scalar type of magnetic field, mm. which is uh, overlooked by the uh, standard engineer. Mm. So, yeah, I think that the single wire power transmission is so amazingly interesting. We have done also some experiments in mm. uh, our laboratory, and there is a, <clears throat> a lot of information of uh, you know from AMI Innovation uh, website where Adrian Marsh has presented also a lot of very interesting experiments related to the. Tesla <coughs> transmitted with using a single wire uh, method and uh, he also kind of uh, clearly demonstrated that there are effects which he called, oh, it's known as a cold electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> and this cold electricity, to my opinion, about also Adrian Marsh, and we have also replicated some of this experiment in our laboratory, 
that mm -hmm. it's somehow also related to gravity or whatever, because it it seems to us that this uh, cold electricity has is capable also to to generate um, extra force which acts on any kind of uh, object, uh, whether it's metallic or plastic mm -hmm. or whatever. So yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's very interesting, right? Yeah, that's a bit new to me. Is there a new question or not a new question? Right. <clears throat> but also, uh, if, if you have cold uh, electricity, that simply means there is no dissipation of energy and so there is no drift current in mm -hmm. the wire. The surface charges are frictionless at mm -hmm. the outside of the wire because they do not meet the, the atoms. And uh, this was also uh, confirmed by official scientists in the 60s or so mm -hmm. that the surface charges are frictionless. Mm -hmm. So if your whole um, energy transfer is based on surface charge only, then you have a uh, a lossless uh, system, yeah. which can be very practical, of course, because mm -hmm. we have now 10 or 20 percent losses in our mm -hmm. electricity system, which is quite a lot, actually. Yeah. Yes, I think you are right. I must say that since then we are studying kind of, we are in this field, we are observing so many very strange phenomena. <laughs> that's uh, right. Look, mm -hmm. we have a question. Thank you for your presentation. <clears throat> what experiments are decisive for this scalar field theory, right? So, <clears throat> well, I, I don't know what the most decisive uh, experiment is, but for, for instance, if you talk about superluminal waves, then it would be nice if you could generate that wave and receive it somewhere else, and then mm. you calculate the velocity. And that would show that you have a, a scalar field wave that is superluminal. Oh, yeah. That would be very essential or decisive. Um, but also the single wire transport system for which you can prove it cannot be based on Maxwell's theory would also be decisive in, in my uh, opinion. Mm. So right. I, I, I don't want to stretch kind of these uh, questions too much, but I, I, I personally myself, I believe that since uh, Nikola Tesla, so to speak, beginning of 20th century, 1905 or whatever, Mm -hmm. There are <clears throat> clear experiments can clearly demonstrate the presence of um, extra field, and I mentioned that in also in during my talk that when Tesla was trying to <laughs> replicate um, Heinrich Hertz uh, mm -hmm. experiment with um, radio frequency wave, electromagnetic waves, he was not able to replicate exactly what uh, Hertz get because uh, Tesla had much, uh, he was much more ahead in, in, with the instrumentation. He has much better uh, laboratory equipment. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was not able to uh, to replicate Hertz experiment because I think he was observing already the kind of the scalar component. He called it radiant energy or radiant Field, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> so I believe that there are many experiments which can be used to prove um, that there is something beyond the standard model of classical electromagnetism. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was not right that transverse waves don't exist right, right. because they exist both. Yeah, yeah. So right. you are they right. Were, they were. It's often the case when there is a an opposition somewhere, then right. there can be both right, and then right. there is a more general theory. That, that's that's you are right. That that was the case. That uh, yeah. essentially both Hertz and Tesla uh, had a piece of the truth. Right? Yes. And so right. But that doesn't mean that if we have this kind of uh, scalar field, that the photon will get acquire a mass. You know, mm. because I want to repeat that again. That this is the official uh, um, position of of. Uh, the physics community, that you cannot have these electrodynamic scalar fields because then the photon would acquire a mass. But that's according to very strict rules. And this is the explanation why the uh, physics community does not believe in electrodynamic scalar fields. Mm. And so that's a bit of a mental obstacle only right. because the, the, the official physics is also restricted by very strict rules 
that are not necessarily true. Right. So. Thank you. Uh, there is also, to my opinion, very interesting question. <clears throat> is there a problem with uh, radiation to the environment with uh, single wire power transfer? In other words, did it function as an antenna? Can it interfere with the communication? Mm -hmm. I have my own opinion on that, but maybe you go first if you want, uh, you want to add something to it. Yeah, I think <clears throat> if the single wire, if it has too, too much divergent uh, electric fields, which are also, um, let's say, deflected or curved, by, for instance, if, if the earth is too close, then the uh, electric fields can become curved towards another object or so. Mm -hmm. So you have to prevent that, that all these electric field lines be stay straight. And then you, you do not have uh, uh, electric magnetic, magnetic radiation that is transmitted by the whole wire, mm -hmm. but you have to keep those electric field lines straight. And that's what you see in a normal antenna, for instance, in a vertical, vertical antenna, that you have electric field lines from the top that are curved back to, to the Earth. And in this curvature, if, if you have a dynamic electric field, it will start to radiate uh, electromagnetic waves. So Tesla also said up that you have, uh, if you have a, a very high up terminal with a sphere very high up, then the line, the electric field lines from that sphere must not be curved back to, to the Earth. And then you can have a, a, a system that will not produce electromagnetic waves. Mm -hmm. So that's my answer to it. It's, uh, both can happen. If you're not careful, you make a system that will radiate all the time. Right. I, <coughs> I just feel that, the, that this question is it because people might also be afraid of, you know, no nowadays that there is this uh, issue with uh, G5 and also how danger the kind of the standard electromagnetic radiation, which is everywhere now in this um, mm -hmm. technological society, how, what I would say. So if we are kind of now envision a new type of field, whether it will be kind of, uh, how, how this will interact with, um, you know, our existing uh, environment, or it, it might be the yeah. danger and so on. Mm -hmm. My own experience is that there is uh, so many uh, very strange phenomena related to that. So it certainly deserves a lot of investigation and so on, but I know mm -hmm. that there are <clears throat> uh, people who are kind of exploring uh, this high energy and high frequency phenomena for the uh, kind of healing purposes. So it's uh, mm -hmm. th th that's another kind of interesting topic. But what we can, what what we see in our laboratory also that uh, the electric, uh, the lightning or kind of the electric discharge is changing its nature depending on obviously the voltage, but also the frequency. At some frequency, the discharge is very unpleasant, yeah, probably yeah. probably not very good for your health and so on. At, at the higher frequency, it changes completely the structure and it sounds now much mm -hmm. more harmonic and so on. So yeah. I think we have no uh, kind of definite answer to that question, but it's a subject of a lot of investigation. Now, any type of technology can be used in a that right. way and in a good way, right. and exactly. that's the same for this technology, if it really can be proven, of course. Uh, a lot of my talk is uh, still uh, hypothetical and needs more experimental proof, but it can, of course, be used in a, applied in a bad right. way, that we become uh, sick of it or, right. or in a Maybe good way interference with uh, communication, right? So I just want to add that in we are able now in our laboratory to switch off the electricity in the whole city, you know, so that's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but that was not, you know, related to <clears throat> communication problem. Right. No. So, are we... Right. Thank you for the very good presentation.
what does a scalar field wave look like or be schematically represented? Yes, then? that's a very good one. Uh, mm -hmm. I have, if you Google scalar fields or scalar field waves, then you see the most beautiful pictures mm -hmm. uh, of people uh, who say you can heal other people with it. And, uh, but these are just pictures. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea how to make a good uh, picture, uh, how it looks like, uh, picture mm -hmm. representation of a scalar field. It's more easy with a vector field. Right. But you can do that with colors and uh, whatever. Right. Mm. To my opinion, you know, the, if we are speaking strictly about the scalar field, it's something which resembles a uh, sound, right? Because the sound we are hearing, you know, is also propagating as a scalar, yeah. uh, scalar wave, right? So it yeah. means the variation of the air density, let's say, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. <coughs> I know that some people are speaking about electric uh, sound, right? Yes. Right. So uh, that, that, that would be a good uh, alternative way to to uh, a, a scalar field or longitudinal uh, electric wave. Right. That is some type of etheric sound. Right. Uh, yeah. And because the ether that was in the previous talk could still be some sort of a medium mm. that's uh, in empty space, so it's filled up with let's say, etheric particles, mm. then the etheric particles can conduct transverse electromagnetic waves, mm. but also longitudinal electro, uh, electromagnetic waves, mm. like in any other material um, uh, medium, mm. you know, because a plasma can conduct both type of waves. Mm. And right. And now we see, I've seen on a, a, long, a, a long copper wire right. that we can also have both types of waves. Right, that's a good point because I think, uh, you know, for plasma physicists, the longitudinal uh, waves are very, they are very familiar with this concept. In plasma yeah. physics, there is no problem, right, with the longitudinal yeah, sc yeah. scalar wave, so to speak. Right? It's, it's a kind of sound wave, but then right. in the plasma. Uh, but for the ether, it's only one type of wave, which is also a bit strange. Mm, mm. And that's an exception, actually. Mm. That uh, the, the vacuum can only conduct the transverse wave. Right. Uh, but that, I think that's wrong. Mm. But uh, the vacuum... Yeah, very often you see in a, in a material medium that the longitudinal wave is much faster than the transverse wave. Mm. Uh, for instance, an earthquake wave Yes, the longitudinal wave is right. faster than the yes. transverse wave. Right. And I think that's also the case in, 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 uh, uh, in the plasma. Mm. Um, so it's not a bad idea to assume that the scalar wave is much faster than the speed of light. Mm. Because that's more according to uh, what we observe already in material media. Right, so yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. So... <coughs> What are the next steps in uh, better relating uh, Kuhn van Blandern's general electrodynamics and Weber's law? Right, very good question. Mm -hmm. Where do the two theories meet and what are the open questions? So I think it's a very good question, thank you. Yeah, I, I have some ideas about this. Uh, I have looked into uh, the uh, method to translate Weber's law into the, the Faraday law, mm. that you can derive Faraday's law from Weber's law, uh, because Faraday's law is very much in a, a certain reference frame, and mm. while Weber's law are not in a reference frame, because mm. it's all relative <coughs> factors and so. Right. So you have to make a translation mm. back to a, a system in a, in a frame of reference, if, mm. or reference, I don't, I never, uh, recall what's the right pronunciation, mm. but uh, you can do that also for uh, the scalar waves and scalar fields mm. that you can derive them from Weber's laws, and mm. I have some ideas about it mm. as well. Uh, it's actually much according to the uh, derivation of uh, uh, Faraday's law. Mm. Right. Uh, that's um, uh, more or less, but I, I think it can be done. Right. And we were also discussing this uh, magnetic field free surface charge transport, which is perfectly in agreement with kind of the Weber's approach, right? So, yes. Right. I think it's an open field. 
uh, we would encourage you know uh, people to contribute as much as they can either experimentally or theoretically right it's uh, it's mm -hmm. very you know very I, I would say very few people are um, busy in this field and it would really to my opinion the possibilities are gigantic what one can do with that uh, it's opened the new door to new technologies and new new sources of energy and so on so i think it's the right yes, time yes. really uh, to do that so mm -hmm. i want to thank you again kuhn for a very inspiring talk and uh, okay. thank you all for watching and i believe that now is really the time for a little break right mm -hmm.